Um, my arithmetic says I've got about 17 minutes, uh, presiding officer, but I'm sure you'll haul me up at the appropriate, uh, uh, appropriate point. Uh, presiding officer, um, I, I think it's uh, as well to think about how children develop. Now, I'm not a dad, so I haven't personally been through this, but psychologists uh, give us a sort of guideline. But before talking about what they say, I uh, spoke to a GERFEC conference uh, on behalf of the minister, Adam Ingram, because I was able to do it as a minister. He wasn't uh, at the right location. And immediately before I spoke, there was a wonderful film of a one-hour-old ch child. Music was being played to the child, and the child was waving its arms in time to the beat. And when the music stopped, they stopped waving their arms. And when it started again, they waved their arms. In other words, children start to interact with their environment uh, from the very point of birth, uh, and perhaps even before that. Uh, psychologists would say that in the first year, we recognize human faces. Year three, we start to acknowledge the past to interpret present events. At year seven, we start to tell jokes, and some people have not moved on from that stage. And at 11, we start to be more uh, conscious of our moral codes. But our personal development is quite varied, and it's unique uh, to us. And of course, children in particular who are raised in less than ideal conditions as a result of poverty, missing parent, uh, or other circumstances, may well have developed at a much uh, slower rate. The one thing I think uh, that we've heard from many parts of the chamber today, which I would agree, is whatever the maturity uh, of a child, prison is no place for a child. And that's why our uh, children's hearing system is an absolute beacon uh, to the world as to how uh, we should treat those in difficulties. And I, uh, as an MSP, had the great privilege of being able to sit in on a children's hearing. I cannot, of course, tell you anything about uh, the detail of what went on there. But the key point about it was it was child-centered. And I think that is absolutely correct. And you would need to work very hard to persuade me uh, otherwise. Now, of course, uh, we've talked about numbers in this debate quite considerably. Um, I will say, as a mathematician, uh, you might think that one and one equals two. I can tell you there are five alternative answers to the one plus one uh, philosophy. I if time permits, at the very end, I'll come back and explain what they are. Uh, so just as in mathematics, uh, so in this debate. Now, Margaret Mitchell very usefully gave us quite a long and interesting list of rights that you acquire at the age of 12. Now, I certainly heard things I hadn't uh, been aware of uh, before. Um, it, it's, worth, uh, it's, it's worth saying that you can get a firearms certificate at the age of 14. Um, you can get a shotgun certificate at any age. There is no age qualification, but you require to be supervised when you're exercising your rights uh, with a shotgun certificate up to the age of 15. So there are a whole series of uh, different ages. You can start to uh, fly an aircraft at the age of 14. Uh, you can drive uh, on the public highway in a car at the age of 17. There is no... Yeah, I will. I'm very grateful... To, sorry. Sorry, wait for Alec Cole, Alex Cole <laughs> Hamilton, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm very grateful to the member for giving way. The member is describing a range of ages of majority around uh, physical limitations or physical capacities. But does he recognise that this chamber only very recently extended the franchise to 16-year-olds, which credits 16-year-olds with sufficient judgment to decide on the right government for them? Should we not be pushing the age of criminal responsibility further? Because if we can recognise that people only have the capacity at 16 to judge politically, then what about their actions of right and wrong um, in the ages preceding that. Stuart Stevenson. Uh, the member makes a good point, which I'm, I'm good to just simply pass on. I will, I will say, of course, the bill itself makes interesting comments at section 39 and section 43, uh, where it talks about take account of the child's age and maturity. And I think that makes a very important point. Uh, I stopped growing when I was 12 years old because I uh, was given a hormone treatment for a particular condition I have, and I just stopped growing. It didn't help the uh, condition, I may say. Uh, but uh, children mature physically and mentally 
at varying rates. And I think whatever we do, uh, we have to take account of that. And I'm pleased to see uh, that in, uh, in the bill, uh, that uh, there is at different points of the bill uh, account uh, taken of that. I'm also very pleased uh, to something rather obvious that this is not a justice bill, which it could have been if you think about it, and there are references to justice uh, committee activities. It is an equalities and human rights bill. And I think uh, that is entirely uh, 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 appropriate. Um, but on age, we're adults at 18, probably for most purposes, but not all, some it's 21. Um, there's no uh, age restriction on opening a bank account. You can open it as soon as you can sign anything, um, although you can't have bank credit uh, until you're 18. Uh, there is a wee issue in the bill, in that it, the assumption is that there's certainty about when people are 12. Uh, Bashir Ahmed, MSP, a late member uh, and friend in this chamber, actually didn't know what his birthday was. And many people who come to Scotland from other jurisdictions are in that circumstance. He was given a birthday, but there was no certainty about it, uh, by the legal system. So if you go and look up the records, you will see something there. But he, apparently his mother, when asked, said, when was he born? She said, spring. And that was all there was to know. So I think uh, in some parts of uh, uh, the, 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 the bill here, uh, possibly at uh, section uh, 23, for example, uh, we might say a constable reasonably believes somebody to be under 12 because there can't always uh, be uh, certainty. And that applies uh, at a, n a number of places throughout, uh, uh, throughout the, the, uh, the bill that we have uh, before us. Um, Turning to the detail of the bill, presiding officer, and I'm alert to your guidance that I should head towards a conclusion, um, that uh, there are a couple of wee things, my usual one, at section 28.7, the definition of vehicle says it includes a vessel, which well, should include an aircraft as well, although it might be ultra uh, to do that, and I'm not absolutely uh, certain about that. We heard about uh, children's right to refuse to answer questions. Um, I do see that's covered at 46.2 uh, and equally at section 42. So I'm not quite clear what more uh, we might have to do. Concluding with uh, the uh, report from the committee upon which I congratulate them, uh, I think we come back to what is a place of safety. And I think it might be helpful if we were able to uh, document or see a document in coming to a conclusion on that of where there are places of safety across Scotland so we can assess if there are enough of them. Presiding officer, I'm obliged for your indulgence.